I will be your lecturer for this lecture. Yes! <laughs> Smart, big brain, my god. or you may call me Ma'am Ima and I will be your teacher for today's lesson. So, so far, we've discussed some integration formulas as well as a technique called the substitution rule for integrals. Kaso, hindi lahat ng integrals magagamitan natin nung mga yun. So, halimbawa, we have the integral x sin x dx. Kahit balibalik na rin natin lahat ng formulas natin, hindi natin siya kaya yung isolve using substitution. So, sa mga ganitong kaso, kailangan natin ng ibang technique para ma-solve ito, which is what we call nga integration by parts. You can think of integration by parts as parang kabaliktaran ng product rule for derivatives. And product rule for derivatives ang gagamitin natin to derive the formula for IDP. So first, let's recall the product rule for derivatives. Ano yung formula natin? So if we are given two differentiable functions, f and g, then the derivative of the product f times g will be equal to f times the derivative of g plus g times the derivative of f. So this is just left the right, right the left. And then we will transpose the term g f prime of x to the other side. So we get f g prime of x is equal to the x of f times g minus g f prime of x. Now we will integrate both sides with respect to x. And on the other side, we get f g prime of x dx. And on the other side, we get the integral of the derivative of f times g minus g f prime of x, again dx. And note na ang integral ng derivative ay yung nasa loob lang. So we just get f times g. And then minus, iwan natin yung integral ng g f prime of x dx. Ngayon, papalitan natin. We will let u be f of x and v be g of x. Then, kapag kinuha yung derivatives, du will be f prime of x dx and dv will be g prime of x dx. So, when we replace everything yung nakuha natin sa taas, we get that the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. And this gives us our formula for integration by parts. So ngayon pa din natin balikan yung kanina natin yung example where we evaluate the integral of x sin x dx. Now we can let u be x and dv be sin x dx. Again, note kapag kinukuha si dv, isasama niyo palagi yung dx. Then, kapag kinuha natin yung du and dv, we have du is dx and v is negative cosine x. Note, by the way, na dun sa pagkuha ng v, from dv, pwede nating i-drop yung constant of integration. So now we recall the formula for IBP. Again, the integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. Then, kapag ginamit natin yung formula, we just have uv is equal to x times negative cosine x. No? And yung integral ng v du is negative cosine x, then du is dx. So let's just simplify, that's negative x cosine x, and then yung negative times negative positive, and then integral ng cosine na lang. But we have a formula for that, the integral of cosine is just sine x. So finally, we have negative cosine x plus sine x plus c, and this is our final answer. However, note natin, kapag hindi yun yung pinili natin yung dv, what if ang pinili natin yung ay instead sin x and dv natin is x dx then ang du is actually okay lang du is cosine x dx pero v is x squared over 2 now if we plug it in dun sa original formula then the integral of x sin x dx will now be x squared over 2 times sin x yun yung u times v minus the integral of v du which is x squared over 2 cosine x dx but this is actually more complicated kesa dun sa binigay sa atin na integral. 
Ang pinaka-tricky na part sa paggamit ng IDPI, alin yung pipiliin yung U at BV. Similar sa dilemma natin kapag gumagamit tayo ng substitution rule. A personal rule I use is kapag, di ba, pipili ka ng BV, tapos kailangan ko siya integrate. Uh, make sure na yung pipiliin yung BV ay kaya nyo ang integrate. Di ba? So, yun yung isa. Pero a more general, significantly more useful thing to remember is what we call liate. Acronym siya ng order in which pwede niyong piliin yung U. So for liate, you choose U to be the function that comes first dun sa L-I-A-T-E. So L stands for logarithmic function. I stands for inverse trigonometric function. A stands for algebraic function. D stands for trigonometric function. And E stands for exponential function. So now we move on to the following examples. So for our first example, let's determine the integral of x, ln x, dx. So ano kaya ang magandang u at dv? So actually, unang-una yung tingnan ay ano ba yung functions na involved dun sa integral nyo? Like anong meron kayo dyan? So meron tayo yung x tsaka ln x. So halimbawa, if you want to use liate, then now una ang l, l is logarithmic, you have an ln kasi, kesa sa algebraic. Yung algebraic dyan na yung x. So perhaps a good u will be ln x. And a good dv could be x dx. Now, if we let u be ln x and dv be x dx, then d will be 1 over x dx and v will be x squared over 2. Now, recall again the IBP formula. The integral of u dv is uv minus in the integral of v du. Then u times v is ln x times x squared over 2 minus ang v du natin ay x squared over 2 times 1 over x dx. And note here that the x's can cancel. Cancel your x's. Charot. And then, so we have x squared over 2 ln x minus, ilabas lang natin yung matitirang 1 half, then integral of x dx na lang. And we know how to integrate that. That's just power rule. So you just have, again, x squared over 2 ln x minus 1 half times x squared over 2 plus c. And let's just simplify stuff further. So you have finally x squared over 2 ln x minus 1 fourth x squared plus c. And this is our final answer. So for our next example, we have to determine the integral of x cosecant squared 2x dx. So halimbawa here, anong meron tayo? We have x and cosecant squared 2x dx. So ang pwede natin gawin, according again to Liate, mauna ang LIA. Oh my God, what is the alphabet? <laughs> we have LIA, A is algebraic, yun yung x, and then... T, E. So, mauna yung A dun sa T. Where, yung T natin is cosecant squared. So, so ang pwede natin kuning U is X. And we can take DV to be cosecant squared 2X TX. So, that gives us DU will be DX. And V, so we have cosecant squared. So, ano ang integral ng may cosecant squared? Negative cotangent. So, note lang here. Uh, meron tayong 2x sa loob. So, you have to do chain rule. So, again, note pala, by the way, na at any point, if kailangan nyo ihiwalay and separately solve for kung ano yung magiging integral ng v, then by all means, do so. Mas important that you are able to do it correctly than quickly. Okay? Especially when you're starting out. So, again, we have v will be negative cotangent 2x Pero chain rule, so dapat meron kang i-divide na 2. So that's why you have times 1 half there. So okay. The integral of x cosecant squared 2x dx will be equal to, again according to our IBP formula, the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. So kapag plinag in natin, we have that the integral of x cosecant squared 2x dx will be equal to ang u times v natin is x times negative 1 half cotangent 2x and then minus the integral of v du where v is negative 1 half cotangent 2x and then times dx. 
So let's just simplify. We have negative 1 half x code tangent 2x. And then labas lang natin yung minus 1 half. So that will be positive 1 half times the integral of cotangent 2x dx. And now we will consider the integral of cotangent 2x dx separately. So let's just call this one star. Um, you can use whatever you want. Bala kayo, you make it fun. And then, so let's call that integral star. So note that cotangent is, ano san equal so lang cotangent So from math so 14. From, question mark. Uh -oh. So recall from math 14 or 17 or childhood <laughs> na ang cotangent ay equal sa cosine over sine. So we can write cotangent 2x as cosine 2x over sine 2x. And note, by the way, that we can solve this using substitution. So if we let y be sine 2x, then dy will be cosine 2x times 2 dx. So rewriting everything in terms of y, this gives us 1 half times the integral of dy over y, which is equal to 1 half ln absolute value y plus some arbitrary constant c sub 1. And again, lahat ng substitute ibabalik. So you just have 1 half ln of absolute value sine 2x plus some c sub 1. And I think that's everything. So going back to our original integral, we have that the integral of x cosecant squared 2x dx is equal to negative 1 half x cotangent 2x plus 1 half times yung nakuha natin sa star, which is quantity 1 half ln absolute value sine 2x. And then ultimately, you add a plus c. So actually, okay na yan sa akin. Pero if you want to simplify further, you can just distribute the constant. So finally, you have negative 1 half x cotangent 2x plus 1 fourth ln absolute value sine 2x plus c. And that is our final answer. So for our next example, we need to solve for the indefinite integral of e to the x cosine x dx. So again, what do we have? We have an e to the x and we have cosine x. So we can choose u to be t before e cosine x and dv to be e to the x dx. Now this will give us du equals negative sine x dx and v will be e to the x. So again, let's recall the IBP formula. The integral of u dv is equal to u v minus the integral of v du. So kapag sinaksak natin sa formula, we have that the integral of e to the x cosine x dx is equal to ang u times v i cosine times e to the x minus the integral of v du, which is e to the x times negative sine x dx. So let's just simplify this. We have e to the x cosine x, tas magiki siyang plus integral of e to the x sine x dx. Now, ano mo mapansin nyo kay e to the x sine x dx? Medyo, kamuha niya si e to the x cosine x dx, di ba? So, we'll actually use IBP again. So, let's just call this star. So, let's look at the integral e to the x sine x dx. So, again, mag ibp tayo ulit. So, let's let u sub 1 naman this time be sin x and dv sub 1 be e to the x dx. So this gives you na du sub 1 is cosine x dx and v sub 1 is e to the x. So again, gagamitin natin yung IBP formula. Ang integral ng e to the x sine x dx is equal to u1 v1, which in this case is e to the x sine x minus the integral of v1 du1, which is e to the x times cosine x dx. But note here that this integral is the same as the given. So, sige nga, backtrack tayo. Ano yung meron tayo so far? Yung total integral ng e to the x cosine x dx ay equal to yung nakuha natin kanina, e to the x cosine x, plus yung lahat na nakuha natin from star, which are e to the x sine x minus the integral of e to the x cosine x dx. Pero since yung integral of e to the x cosine x dx appears on both sides of your equation, pwede lang natin silang pagsamahin to one side. So we have on one side 2 times the integral of e to the x cosine x dx will now be equal to e to the x cosine x plus e to the x sine x. And actually, nagkamili ako dito. Technically, dapat may plus na since tapos na yung integration, quote-unquote. Pero, okay lang. Importante sa pinakadulo, sa final answer, meron kayong plus C. 
So basically, gusto lang natin at this point, i-isolate yung integral. So finally, we have that the integral of e to the x cosine x dx will be equal to, so we divide both sides by 2. We have 1 half times the quantity e to the x cosine x plus e to the x sine x plus c. And that will be our final answer. Hi, editing Ime here. So, uh, I forgot to add this, pero note, ano special sa integral na to? Una, more than once tayo nag-IBP. And two, kung napansin nyo, ano yung klase ng functions na involved? E to the x and sine and cosine. So, ano meron kay e to the x tsaka sine and cosine? Si e to the x, ang derivative at ang integral niya ay ang sarili niya, di ba? And si sine at cosine, kapag kinuha mo yung integral and yung derivative, parang nagpapalit-palit lang sila. So, sila yung tipo na hindi na uubos. OMG, ma'am. Sana all hindi na uubos. Kahit mag-IBP ka, compared to, say, kapag mayroon kang algebraic term, say, x, di ba kapag derivative mo siya, magiging siyang dx na lang, and stuff like that. So, mag-iingit kayo sa mga ganong klaseng pag-IBP. Okay? So, how does IBP change kapag definite integral na? Actually, not by much. So, here we will combine our IBP formula from before, as well as use the fundamental theorem of calculus. And para sa definite integral, we have to assume that f prime and g prime are both continuous on whatever interval you're going to integrate on. So, we just have the definite integral from a to b of u dv is equal to uv evaluated from a to b minus the definite integral from a to b of v du. So in our next example, we can use that to evaluate the definite integral from 0 to 1 of x e to the negative 5x dx. So here we can let u be x and dv can be e to the minus 5x dx. Then this will give us du will be dx. And v will be negative 1 fifth e to the minus 5x. So again, if you need extra time or separate space to solve that, we have nans gilid. And now, when we look at the definite integral from 0 to 1 of x e to the minus 5x dx, recall your IBP formula. We have u v. u is x. v is negative 1 fifth e to the minus 5x. And we evaluate that from 0 to 1 minus the definite integral from 0 to 1 ng VDU, which is negative 1 fifth e to the minus 5x dx. So basically, evaluate lang natin as you would any other definite integral. We have, pag sinaksak si 1, minus 1 fifth e to the minus 5. Pag sinaksak si 0, 0 na. So we just have negative 1 fifth e to the minus 5 for the first term. And for the second term, we can simplify that. That will be 1 fifth 0 to 1 e to the minus 5x dx. And we know how to integrate this. This is the same as v. So this is just negative 1 fifth e to the minus 5x times 1 fifth from yung nasa labas. And we just evaluate that from 0 to 1. So we have negative 1 over 5 e to the 5. Binabalang natin yung e to the minus 5. Tapos we have minus 1 over 25 times kapag in-evaluate we will have e to the minus 5 minus e to the 0, and e to the 0 is 1. So finally, we just distribute. We have negative 1 over 5 e to the 5 minus 1 over 25 e to the 5 plus 1 over 25. And let's just simplify it a bit further. We just have so yung 1 over 5 e to the 5 magiging 5 over 25. So we will have minus 6 over 25 e to the 5 plus 1 over 25. And this is our final answer. We now move on to a few applications. So for our next example, we have the following word problem. The marginal cost of producing x units of some product is given by c prime of x is equal to ln x, where x is greater than 1. We have to find the total cost function c of x if c of 1 or c evaluated at 1 is equal to 5. So note that c of x is equal to the integral of the derivative of c, which is the integral of ln x in this case. So since wala tayong formula for the integral of ln x, perhaps we could use IBP.
by letting u be ln x and dv be dx. Then du is 1 over x dx and v is x. So again, using your IBP formula, the integral of ln x dx is equal to uv minus the integral of v du, where you have uv is x times ln x minus the integral of v du, v is x, du is 1 over x dx. And again, Cancel those x's. Yeah. So we have x ln x minus the integral of the x, which is just x. So finally, we have that the integral of ln x is x ln x minus x plus some arbitrary constant k. And this is actually going to be our function c of x. Now, again, hindi natin alam yung value ni k, pero given tayo na, c of 1 is equal to 5. So, to find the value of k, we just evaluate yung nakuha nating c of x sa 1. So, 5 will now be equal to 1 times ln 1 minus 1 plus k. And note that ln 1 is 0. So, just transposing minus 1 to the other side, we finally get k will be equal to 6. And yan yung value no constant. So finally, our equation for c of x is equal to x ln x minus x plus 6. So bago natin tapusin yung lecture, meron pa tayo isa pang example na application which is total income and present value. So if we let c of t be the total income of a business in t years, then the income of that business during a period of 0 to t sub 1 years will be given by the integral from 0 to t sub 1 of c of t dt. If we also consider an annual interest rate r, then the present value of the income over t sub 1 years, which is the total amount of money that would have to be deposited into the account so that the total amount on the account would be equal to the income up to time t sub 1, will be given by the integral from 0 to t sub 1 of c of t e to the minus rt dt. So in our last example, we have the following word problem. A company expects its income during the next five years to be given by the following cost function, 100,000 T, where T ranges from zero to five years. We need to find the present value of this income over the five-year period, assuming an annual interest rate of 10%. So let's recall the equation for present value. Ang equation natin for present value ay the integral from zero to T sub one. In this case, ang T sub one natin ay five years. So this should be zero to five. Tapos, yung integrand ay cost function C of t times e raised to negative rt, where ano yung given sa atin, ang r natin, which is the interest rate, is 10% or 0. 0.1. Okay, and again, t sub 1 is 5. So, plugging that in, we just have the integral from 0 to 5 ng 100,000 t times e raised to negative 0.1 t dt. But then natin i-factor out 100,000. So we are left with the integral of t e to the negative 0.1 t dt evaluated from 0 to 5. Let's call this integral star and let's consider it separately. So here, kailangan natin gamitan siya ng IBP. So we let u be t and dv be e to the negative 0.1t dt. So this gives us du is dt and v is just, so this gives us du is dt and v will be e to the negative 0.1t all over negative 0.1. Alright, so plugging these in into our present value formula, we get 100,000 times the integral from 0 to 5 of t e to the negative 0.1t dt is equal to 100,000 times uv, ang uv natin ay t times e to the negative 0.1 t, tapos meron tayong negative 1 over 0.1. Tapos we evaluate that from 0 to 5. Tapos minus the integral of vdu, ang vdu natin ay e to the negative 0.1 t over negative 0.1. So we have that, tapos times dt, and we are taking that from 0 to 5. Evaluating the first part, we just get so, 5 times negative 1 over 0.1, tapos e raised to negative 0.1 times 5 is negative 0.5. Tapos minus 0 times something, pero 0 na yun, so wala na. Ang natira lang is this term. And then, 
yung kabilang integral, we know how to integrate this. This is just e to the negative 0.1. And then yung kabilang integral, so pwede na natin ilabas yung negative 1 over 0.1. So magiging siyang positive 1 over 0.1. Tapos times, ano yung integral niyan? We have e to the negative 0.1 t over negative 0.1. And we need to evaluate that from 0 to 5. So basically, ngayon, we just need to simplify. Medyo madugulang, pero kaya natin to. So we have 100,000 times the quantity. Simplify ko lang to. Ang 0.1 ay 1 over 10. So pwede natin i-multiply dun sa 5 sa taas. So we get minus 50. And e to the negative 0.5 is 1 over square root of e. And then we have yung negative 0.1. Pwede natin ilabas. Multiply natin siya dun sa 1 over 0.1 sa labas. And ang 0.1 squared ay 0 0.01 or 1 over 100. So that gives us negative 100 times, ano yung matitira? We have e to the negative 0.1 times 5 or e to the negative 0.5 minus e to the 0. And then e to the 0 is 1. So when we write that out, we have... 100,000 times negative 50 over square root of e. Distributing yung 100, we get minus 100 over square root of e. Tapos negative 1 yung e to the 0, ba? So we have minus 100 times negative 1. So we have plus 100. And simplifying further, we get... One eternity later. 100,000 times 100 minus 150 over square root of e. And you can verify that this is actually positive. And this gives us our final answer for the present value. Technically, dapat meron tong units ng currency. So say, peso or dollar, something like that. Pero kung hindi indicated, I guess okay lang kahit wala. Before you go, these are some additional exercises you may try on your own. And we are done! That is it for today, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. But sa totoo lang, ang pinakamahirap na... <laughs> pinakamahirap na parts, integration by parts. Teh!